Hey everyone, in today's video I want to talk about those DigiSpark 80x85 base little boards. Uh, you might remember the, my previous video, assuming that uh, you're following the channel, when I received some of those from China. And I mentioned that uh, programming can be tricky for those. Yeah, they are nothing like your usual Node MCU. Let's see what's the difference. Originally, these DigiSpark boards are developed and sold by a company called DigiStump. Nowadays they are self-admittedly take a hiatus from um, developing this board and they are just concentrate on other projects. But luckily for us, they have left the whole website dedicated to this board family intact. So there's the documentation, driver downloads and whatnot. And uh, if you follow their wiki, uh, you can just uh, use it as a tutorial to set up the board in your IDE. First of all, let's quickly run through the installation procedure together. The most important thing we need is the board manager URL for our Arduino IDE. The drill is pretty much the usual. You take the board manager URL and add it to your Arduino IDE, as you can see in the next few seconds. As you can see, I already have the board installed, but if you are using it for the first time, you need to click the install button here and the Arduino ID will take care of the rest. After that, you should be able to select the board under the usual board selection menu. An important thing is that these DigiSpark boards come with their own programmer called Micronucleus. You can see it under the programmer menu. Moreover, other than the vanilla 80 chips, they have their own bootloader uploaded already. So all you really need to do is write Arduino code for whatever project you have in mind. So at this point you should be able to implement and compile your own code, but when you are trying to flash it, you will see a problem. The device is not visible under the usual port menu. The installation instructions said something about the driver, so I assume you have installed it. But in itself it won't help to solve the problem. Okay, so the main problem with these DigiSpark devices is that they won't appear as a normal device in your Windows system. Depending on your Windows version, they might appear for a few seconds upon connecting, or they can appear as a faulted device or something like that, but they won't work like an Arduino or an ESP. Instead, you just need to start the usual upload without an active COM port. And let's see what happens. As you can see the ID is waiting for you to plug in the device. This will happen regardless whether you have previously plugged in the device or not. If you have the device already connected you need to remove it and reconnect it. Otherwise this operation will just time out. Ok, great, so now our uploads are working. Fine, but before concluding this video, I want to show you something. So there's a section in the documentation dedicated to differences between your usual Arduino board and these DigiSpark boards. Well, the pinout is different for sure, but that's a no-brainer. It's like a totally different board format. However, there's one thing that will hurt the average user, and it's the lack of support for serial monitor. So basically, you cannot do those debug printouts when needed. Instead, there's a separate section dedicated for workarounds and hacks to substitute the lack of serial monitor. If you check the list, well, um, to be honest, I'm not really convinced. I mean, 
All of those are way too complicated and way too hacky for my taste, to be honest. Instead, my suggestion is that you should try to develop your code on an Arduino Uno, let's say, and then when you are finished with the debugging and it's pretty much working, you should try compiling it for the 8985. If you're not using some really tricky specific library, then I'm pretty much convinced that it will work just like that. One thing you should never forget though, that the DigiSpark or 8985 has lot 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 less memory. So you should be keen on optimizing your memory usage when developing on the Arduino Uno. Anyway, that's it. I hope this video helped you at least a bit. If you have additional questions, please just write it down in the comments. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, hit like. If you want to help my channel and see more of my content, hit subscribe. If you want to check out behind the scenes and want to know more about me, then follow me on social media. You can find the links here. Thank you again and see you next time.